Hello, everyone. My name is Justin, and I'd like to welcome you to the, today's FreshBooks webinar for new users. So when you first log into FreshBooks, you're going to be met with your dashboard. That's this button over here, which is showing you the information here. We won't go over, up, over into too much information, but essentially what these graphs are showing are reports from the report section that's based off information that you've entered into FreshBooks. For example, outstanding invoices is showing you invoices that are past the due date, which we'll be going over. Um, it also shows you invoices that have been sent out, but not paid. The total profit and loss report, this is essentially gonna show you your income, what you've invoiced versus your expenses, what you've spent. And then as you scroll down, you're gonna see other reports as well. As you take a look at the report, uh, you'll notice there's some menu options, like for example, my total profit, which is automatically defaulting to this year. Uh, I haven't had any sales this year yet, that's why it's empty. But you are able to go ahead and change those filters if you want, it's up to you. Uh, so this is an example of my last year's report. There we go. In FreshBooks, to go ahead and enter in information like clients, invoices, expenses, there's a couple of different ways to kind of achieve the same results. If you're on your dashboard and you want to quickly create a client, you can click this create new button up here. These are all the things that you can create into FreshBooks. Just click on the item and it's going to get you to that section where you can start creating that thing, in this case, a client. For today's demo though, I'm going to be going over the strategy of selecting the option on the left. I'll end up ending up on a landing page and then creating the client from or the item from there. So let's jump into it with a client. So like I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and click clients on the left hand side, which is essentially going to bring me to a client landing page. This is going to be similar, a similar page for each of the other sections like invoices and expenses that we touch. It's essentially just a page showing you all the information you've entered in regards to that subject. For example, this being a page where all my clients are hanging out. Um, and then I see recently active up here. Um, I'll come back to this page in just a second after we create a client and we'll take a look at what a client profile looks like um, as well as take a look into the search function. But I'm gonna go ahead and click new client on the top right. And like that first page I saw, this is where I'm gonna go ahead and create the client. Um, with FreshBooks, you are just gonna simply fill out the information that is required, though not all information is required in every single section. For a client, the only thing I need to put in is either a first, uh, both a first and a last name. I can put in just a company name. Um, you are able to fill in additional information. For example, if you're probably going to be invoicing your clients by email. So having an email is a good idea. You can put a phone number in if you want to and the address. So because Conrad is so graciously helping me today, I'm going to go ahead and add Conrad as a client by just putting his name in there. I use Conrad as an example a lot, so I'll make the, I'll put a three there to differentiate it. And again, I'm going to be invoicing uh, Conrad a lot, so I'm going to go ahead and put in my email address. Perfect. Um, so as I go ahead and fill this in, if this looks good to me, I didn't fill in a company, I didn't fill an address. Um, I could just go ahead and save it here, but there are some options on the right-hand side that I kind of wanted to go over. Uh, these options do appear on the invoice, so if you don't fill it out here, that's okay. But I always say, if you have an opportunity to fill out something that's just going to make things easier in the future, might as well go ahead and do that. Um, so uh, in FreshBooks, when you're sending out invoices, there's a couple things you can do to help you get paid faster. You can either set reminders or you can end up charging a late fee, and those uh, settings are set per client. That means Conrad can have a different set of rules versus another client I've created. So to set up the rules specifically for Conrad, if I did want to send out reminders, this is when I send the invoice out, letting them know that they need to pay or that a payment was due, I can click send reminder, automatically send reminder, and then I'll see a default option, but I can actually set up to three. And you can just fill in the information. So I can do before, after. So an example being that if I have this set up five days before the due date, which we'll see on the invoice when we create it, a reminder will be sent to the client. 15 days after the due date, they'll get another reminder. I think the third one's a little overdone, so I'm just going to remove that and then click done. So this means that this setting will be set up when I create an invoice for Conrad in the future. Late fees are like uh, are like reminders, except you can only do one. And what will happen is if the client doesn't meet the criteria of paying the invoice on this on this time frame, uh, a fee will be added to the invoice automatically. 
I can either do that by percentage or flat rate. Um, so let's just say I want to add a $5 fee. And this happens if they don't pay me 30 days after the due date. So kind of digressing on what we just did, let's pretend I sent Conrad an invoice five days before the due date, he's going to get a message. 15 days after the due date, he's going to get another message. And then 30 days after the due date, a $5 fee will automatically be added to the invoice. FreshBooks is a company where you can work, uh, send invoices out internationally. I know a lot of businesses tend to focus locally. So if you're in the US, you probably have US clients. If you're in Canada, you probably have Canadian clients. But if you are more of that international company, you can set clients to settings to know if they're going to be international. For example, let's just say Conrad is from the US. I'm from Canada, the head office, we're a Canadian company. Uh, but let's just say I, uh, Conrad's from the US. I can go ahead and click on currency and exchange and automatically set them up to USD. This basically means when I send them out an invoice, it's going to be in US dollars. This strategy, um, might you might want to tailor the strategy a little bit, depending on if you are accepting payments by credit card. Uh, the reason why I say that is that if you want to accept payments by credit card using WePay, um, you won't be able to sell outside your currency. You can still send the invoice in USD, but you need to accept payments outside of FreshBooks. But we do have Stripe, which kind of fills in the gap. So if you have Stripe, the client will, you can do it in USD and you Stripe will do the exchange for you. If you have a Canadian client, you can still just sell them in your local currency. They just have to pay the exchange rate on their credit card machine. The last button down here is invoice attachments. So generally the rule of thumb is when you send an invoice out to a client, they're gonna get an email saying you've sent them an invoice. They'll open up that email. And at the bottom of that email, there's a button that says view invoice. They click on that button, they go to a web page, and they can see their invoice there as well as an option to pay if you turned it on. Sometimes people don't actually have an email, so they have to have an internet connection. But with this button, I can turn this on. And basically what this means is that when Conrad gets the email, they'll still get that email with the button that says view invoice on the bottom. But in addition, as an attachment, they are going to get a PDF copy that they can download right from the email itself. Um, so just an extra little thing you can do if you wanted to turn this button on or off. Uh, but all these settings look good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And this is going to kick me back to that client landing page we were talking about earlier. As I mentioned, uh, on most pages, the invoices, expenses, and clients, you're going to see the last clients touched. Uh, so I create a Conrad, so he's first on the list. If I create a new uh, new client, he'll just get moved down. You can remove this if you want. Um, again, it's just a quick view in case you log, you exited out of the client and you want to get back into it quickly. With that being said, as you scroll down a little bit more, this is going to be your actual list of clients. Um, so if you, if I wanted to find Conrad on the list, I would type Conrad here. Um, Conrad three. Let's do three fresh books. I'm not finding it right now, but uh, I can click up here to find it. But I can go ahead and click on the search function down here. Um, also, there is an advanced search option where I can either search for the business name, I can search for the contact name, I can search for an email, or I can put in keywords. As you kind of look down, the organization of the business is going to be that top line. I use the same one a lot. Um, trying to see if there's an example of one where I use a different one. I, I don't have an example, but the top row is the business. The bottom row is the client name. And then if you only did one, they're going to be the same. Perfect. And then if I go into the client account, I'm going to see some information in here, but it is going to be pretty empty. But if you want to develop a strategy of clicking the client profile, I can get a lot of information from this screen. Um, I can add a secondary client. So for example, let's just say Conrad has a secretary. I can type in assistant person bank.com. So by doing this, uh, I can actually send an invoice out to both of these people, though Conrad's going to be the main person on the list. Um, if I had invoices sent out to Conrad, I can click on invoices and see all of Conrad's invoices down here. If I've had expenses that were assigned to Conrad, which is something we go over in uh, FreshBooks 201, I would see them down here. 
um, and then like credits, projects, all that. So basically anything associated to this client, I can go into the client section and view that. I can also develop a strategy of going into the client profile, clicking create new, and then creating an invoice directly for them, an expense directly for them. So again, this button is primarily everything related to this client in, in particular. If I ever do need to make a change, I can click more actions, edit client. That brings me back to that edit screen. Um, and then if I ever want to like generate a report specifically for this client, I can click more actions, generate statement, and this will show me all the payments and invoices sent out to them. So just another little report. Again, it's not a common strategy that people click clients, come into the client and start creating stuff from here, but it's just something that you can do. Now that we've created the client, uh, let's go ahead and put some more information into FreshBooks, such as an expense. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click expenses on the left-hand side here. And like I mentioned before, it's going to be similar to the client page. This is a list of all my expenses down here. These are the last expenses that I've touched. I can remove this bar if you don't like it. Um, and then to create a new expense, I can do a few things. So what we're used to by now is I can click new expense, and then I can manually create an expense, which we'll go over in just a second. I can upload a receipt, which will create an expense. So if I click upload receipt, I go into my file, I upload the receipt, it's gonna grab the information from it. I'll have to make a few edits because it's not perfect, uh, but I can create a expense that way. If I want to, let's just say you, most of you people are new to, or most of you FreshBookers are new to FreshBooks and you have a lot of information that you want to bring in, it might not make sense to create one expense at a time. So if you go to your bank or your other software that you're moving away from, if you get a CSV or an Excel file of all of your expenses, you can come into this expense section, click more actions and import that file. Uh, you don't have to do too much editing on the file, but you'll import the file and it'll bring everything in in a large chunk. And then the last most popular way of bringing in expenses is through a feature called our bank connection. Uh, so to get there, you'll click the gear icon up here and you will click bank connection. You'll follow the steps in finding your bank. You will essentially click on your bank, log into your bank using your online banking information. And then once that's connected, uh, this one's broken right now, it will be connected up here. And basically what this feature is doing is it's going to take all of your expenses from your bank accounts and it's going to bring it into the expense section for you automatically. So let's just say I go to the store, use my debit card, that's a charge. That is kind of come into the expense section here, just kind of as a, uh, an expectation. There is always a little bit of a delay so it might take like three or four days for you to actually see the expense in the system. Let's do the other route of creating an expense. So I'm gonna click new expense up here and I'm gonna manually create expense. And this is essentially the information that is being pulled. Um, so I just gonna to wanna to fill out the information kind of as I go. Uh, so let's just say I'm putting in a FreshBooks, um, a FreshBooks subscription fee. So I'm gonna type in FreshBooks here. I've actually already used FreshBooks in the past, so I can actually just select the option from the dropdown. If the option doesn't exist, just type it in and select it, but I'm gonna select FreshBooks here. Let's just say I'm on the plus plan, which is $25 USD a month. What kind of category this is? So we do have pre-selected categories. Um, so I can choose from that, which would be a subscription right here, uh, actually. I think it's other expenses. I think I might've made a subscription myself, but if I wanted to make my own category, what I can do is I can just type in the name of the category I wanna make. I'll click create the category. I'll nestle it under one of my existing categories. So let's just say it's an other expense. I'll go ahead and hit save. And then I'll nestle it under that category. And the reason why the categories are, are good is because when we take a look at our expense report, we're going to be able to filter the expenses by category. So it's gonna let me know how much in other expenses or how much in subscriptions I've spent. And um, this is also a really good strategy if you're gonna be in, or if you're paying contractors. Um, I might actually suggest creating a category for each of the contractors themselves. So at the end of the year, you can look at your expense report, show how much you spent in contractors in general, 
so how much you spent in contractor specifically for a person and that's going to make making your 1099k forms a whole lot easy easier i can go ahead and add a uh, description here though this is not necessary i can go ahead and add a copy of my receipts up here if i wanted to and then this section you're actually going to see on the invoice as well but let's just say there was taxes on this expense so when i put 25 dollars in that's my final price let's say i want to do taxes I'll click on add taxes. Yours is probably going to look a little bit more blank. Um, every time you use a tax, it saves onto this list. If you want to create a, a tax rate, you're just going to fill in the form yourself. Uh, we don't give you your tax rates because they change so often, but you'll just go ahead and change it here. If you ever need to edit a tax rate, you can just find the existing one, change it, and then you're good to go. I'm not going to add taxes to this. Um, so again, on the right hand side, there is a currency, so it's very rare that you're buying a product that's different from the currency that you have. Uh, but if you did, you'd be able to change that here. I'm just going to leave it as Canadian dollars. And then there's a cost of goods sold button here. And basically what a cost of goods sold means is that if you have a product that you're reselling, let's just say I bought a burger, uh, burger and I'm going to sell that burger to a client that's most likely going to be a cost of goods sold because you're reselling the product. But let's just say you bought that burger and you're eating it as part of your business because you're not reselling it, that's not a cost of goods sold. So if you did wanna make a cost of goods sold, this is where you're gonna turn it on. It's definitely good to double check with your accountant uh, just to make sure if it should be cost of goods sold or not, but this is where you're gonna do it. You can also rebill the expense to your client. I'm not gonna go over that today, but if you did wanna get a head, uh, head start on that, you would just simply assign the client, mark it as billable, and then you can put it on the invoice again, which we go over a little bit deeper in webinar 201. But this looks good to me, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save, and we're going to see what happens to the expense section. So like the clients, I'm in that general expense section over here. This was the last expense I've created. If I scroll down, I can actually see the expense down here. If I need to search for expenses, I can just type them in here. Uh, this is going to find any keyword uh, relating to that. So whether the keywords in the notes, the client name, the pro, uh, the store name or the category. With that being said, just to the right of the search function, there is advanced search. And it's going to allow me to filter a little bit better uh, than the search menu. So I can search by category. So again, we're using that example of a contractor, let's just say, I've created expenses for Justin, who's nestled under contractors. I can click apply and I see all the expenses I've made for him specifically. Going back here, another cool tool is remember the bank connection that brings your, your expenses in from your bank account. I can click on bank account, which shows me all my bank accounts here, select a bank account, and it's going to show me all the expenses that came in through that connection. So it filters out all the other expenses and, and lets me see if I'm missing anything, or let's say I know that I want to edit an expense for checkings, I can do that from here. So again, using that advanced search tool, super useful. Not a lot of people use it. You can filter by dates and things like that as well. Cool. So now that we went ahead and created the expense, we're kind of we, we've completed half of FreshBooks of our profit and loss. We told the system how much we've spent. But now we want to kind of start making money to tell the system how much we've earned so that our reports can be accurate at the end of the year. So uh, we do uh, the best way to kind of bring in expenses and or to bring income into FreshBooks is when you're sending out an invoice. Before sending out an invoice, I did kind of want to take a really tiny detour just to show you how to accept credit card payments with FreshBooks, because there is something that you need to do before creating the invoice that a lot of people do after they create the invoice, and that's setting up the credit card gateway. To do that, you're going to click the gear icon up here, and you're going to click online payment settings. When you're on the online payment settings, you're going to see information that kind of looks like this. This one's already filled out on my end but it'll say that you need to fill it out. Essentially, whatever gateway you want to use, FreshBooks Payments is WePay, Stripe, or PayPal. You're going to click Connect with PayPal, Connect with Stripe, or fill in the information here. And you're just going to fill in, you're going to fill in what I like to call the application to use this business, uh, to use this gateway as your credit card processor. They're going to ask for your business information, uh, depending on where you're located, 
Uh, they do, if you make over 200 transactions or $20,000, you're required to report it to the government. So they need to be able to confirm that you're able to work where you are. So they're going to ask you for like your business information, your, your tax forms, things like that. The second step is putting in your bank account information so that they know where to pay you when the money comes in. Once everything is filled in correctly, your FreshBooks payments is going to kind of look like this. Stripe is going to look similar. Um, you'll be able to see your bank account here, what email is attached to your account, things like that. Um, like I said, if you are going to be only selling in your own currency, FreshBooks payments is, is where you want to go. The biggest difference is we're able to provide a lot more support for FreshBooks payments. We work with WePay a lot closer. Though, if you are going to be selling internationally in different currencies, then maybe you want to use Stripe. Um, make sure to check what the fees are. They're generally 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction, 3.5% um, plus 30 cents per transaction for American Express. Stripe is 2.9 plus 30 for all cards. We do offer ACH transfers in the US, which is 1%. Uh, and then you can do PayPal. I don't have PayPal's information. Uh, I think they're specific to your business. But like I said, uh, like I mentioned, um, if you are going to be accepting pay payments by credit card or ACH, make sure that you do this step first. Now that we're done setting up the credit card options, we're going to go ahead and create an invoice. And again, we're following kind of the same rules of what we did before. I'm going to click invoices on the left hand side. Taking a look here, these are the last invoices I've touched. These are the last invoices I've created. And to create a new invoice, I'm going to click new invoice on the top right hand side. So like before, there's, uh, it's just going to be filling in the information kind of as we go. When you first started FreshBooks, you put in your business information. This is what's appearing up here. That's being pulled from your settings. If you ever did something in error, you can actually come here and just change it. Once you make the change and save the invoice, this is going to change your settings. So you can either change this in the settings first, or you can change it from the invoice. It's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and add the client we created. So Conrad three fresh books. So it's just, again, I'm going to pull in the information from the client we pulled in originally. But with that being said, if I forgot to create the client first and I went into the invoice, I actually don't need to create the client first. I can create the client right from the invoice itself. So let's just say I'm doing one for me. All I have to do is kind of fill in the information. I can put the company name, the phone number here. You're going to ask, where do I put the email address? The email address is going to be the last step, whether I created the client new, uh, where I'll add it in the last step, or if I uh, it'll pull the existing email if the client's already created. Uh, but let's go back to Conrad. There we go. So I added Conrad here. Uh, so you got your date of issue. This is going to be when the invoice was created. So if you're the type of business that kind of wants to do things in advance, I can change the date to next week. Um, due dates. Uh, due dates are going to be something that carry over to the next invoice, depending on what you did on the last invoice. Um, due dates can be set up to be either on date of issue. That basically means that when the invoice gets sent out, if they don't pay by the end of the day, the status will go to overdue. Uh, again, this is primarily affecting statuses and letting your clients know when you want them to pay. I can do a net, uh, basically saying like, you don't have to pay me on the day of, I want you to pay me in 15 days. Uh, I can change this to anything, 30 days, 45 days, I'll leave it as 15 for now. And then if you're a type of strategy that doesn't really have like a, a solid, you owe me 15 days later for everybody, I can click custom and use the calendar and then say, okay, for this specific invoice, I want you to pay me by the end of the month. Our system, when that happens, it does turn it into a, a daily amount because uh, this is the daily amount that's going to be used on the next invoice. Uh, so if you are using this custom option, make sure that you're changing the due date every time if it's a different due date. But again, I'm just going to leave it at 15 days. There we go. Uh, you got invoice number over here. Invoice number is another section that carries over from one invoice to another, meaning that if I make this invoice number one, the next invoice is going to know that this invoice is number one and make it invoice number two. Your invoices most likely start at number one. If you want to change that to like 100 or 1,000, just go ahead and erase the number and then type in whatever you'd like to have. There is a reference field over here. Uh, the reference field is just a note section, not highly used in FreshBooks, but you can put like a PO number. It's just a spot to add extra information. 
Now that that all looks good, let's go ahead with the bread and butter. Let's go start adding items to the invoice. So to add a line or add an item, you're gonna add a line and you're just gonna go ahead and type in what you're selling. Today, I am selling watches because that is the first thing I've seen. Uh, so I'm selling watches, that's the name of the product. There is a section down here for a description. So I can say silver works great. But I can add a description here if I want. Just keep in mind the name of the product is limited to so many characters. The description I can add as much as I want in here. How much am I going to sell the watch for? That's the rate. So it's a 99 or just under a hundred dollar watch. How many watches am I selling? I'm going to be selling two. And then the system is going to do the math for you. If I want to add taxes to this, because taxes aren't automatically applied, I can click add tax. I get that tax pop-up we talked about earlier in the expense section. So let's just say I wanted to do HST at 13%. And then the math is all going to be done here. So taxes aren't applied to the invoice as a whole. Taxes are going to be applied to each line item individually. Um, once you start adding products, they're going to start appearing in this dropdown and they're going to be kind of saved. So let's just say I want to sell the battery. I can just choose it from the list. Uh, this is going to be no taxes, so I'm not going to se uh, select it. And then I'm only going to sell one and it's going to kind of add as you go. Let's just say this invoice looks good to me. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the options down here. As I go down, I'm going to see add a discount. So if I want to add a percentage off on the invoice, I can just type it in here. Again, it's going to do the math for me. Uh, I don't want that though. Uh, and then I have two options here that are pretty similar. And that's if you want to split the payment on the invoice. Um, request a deposit allows you to make two payments. One's going to be on the due date or one's going to be on the issue date, which is a deposit. One's going to be on the due date. So I can either just put in the flat amount so I want you to pay $100 today, or I can do a percentage where I want you to pay half today, half later. There is another option called add a payment schedule, and this is more intended for people who want to have more than two payment schedules or you don't want them to pay on the due date. Um, I can actually set up a deposit on here the same way as the other button, so I usually always prefer using this method. Uh, but for example, let's just say I want them to pay $100 today, and then I want them to pay $150.98 on February 28th. I can do that, or I can say, hey, I want you to pay me my deposit by Jan uh, January 31st. I can do up to 10 different payment schedules as well. But I'm going to turn that off. As I go down a little bit more, we're almost done with the invoice. There's two sections down here. There are notes and there are terms. Notes are specific to this invoice. Once I create this invoice and I send it to the client, this is not going to appear on any other invoices. Terms are a little bit more semi-permanent. These will follow to the next invoice. So if I write terms here, like how I want you to pay me and I save this invoice, the next time I create an invoice, this is gonna be automatically there. I could remove it if I wanted to. Um, or I can change it, which will change the rule going forward. Uh, but just keep in mind, notes are specific to the invoice. And then um, the terms are going to follow to the next invoice. And then there's a section down here for attachments, which are self-explanatory. I forgot this section that I usually like to talk about when I add the client. But remember, when we were creating the client, there was those options. To, uh, options. So as I mentioned, you can also update these on the invoice. So if you created the client first or you're creating the client on the invoice and it all says zero and you want to set it up, you can do it from this section as well. On the right here, you got your customized invoice style. So we have two different looks in FreshBooks. So we got one with a banner. Uh, we have one with the logo on the left-hand side. You can change the color if you want. Let's make it black. Um, and then you can change the lettering. It's up to you. A little not too much customizability, but just know it's there. Go ahead and click done. So whatever you change it to on this invoice and you save it, that's going to be moved to the next invoice, uh, which is, um, so you won't have to change that every single time. And then that last section I mentioned, uh, when you accept credit card payments, there's two steps to this. One is filling in the application, which we've already went over. And then the next step is just making sure that it's turned on on the invoice. So if this says accept online payments, no, it means when the client gets an invoice, they're not going to be able to see an option to pay by credit card. It will look something like this. 
If you wanted them to accept payments by credit card, click on here, select FreshBooks Payments, Stripe, PayPal, and then select which options you want them to pay by. In FreshBooks, again, we have two different ways that you can make a payment, credit card or ACH, which is like a bank transfer. Bank transfers usually have a lower fee, so if you only wanted to accept bank transfers, I can turn off the credit cards, this forces them to use that, or as always, they can pay you outside of FreshBooks. If I only wanted to offer credit cards, I would do that. I'm going to offer both. Down here, there is an option to allow clients to make partial online payments for this invoice. This basically means when this invoice gets sent to the client and they're going to pay by credit card, if this button is unselected, the client has to pay $250.98. If this button is selected, then they can change the amount. So they can say, hey, I only want to pay you $50 today and then make a payment of $50. So this button allows the clients a little bit more flexibility in deciding what they want to pay today. It actually might be even a good strategy to do this versus a payment schedule as a payment schedule is rigid in the dates where this allows the client a little bit more flexibility. So this looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and click send to. The email address that I put in the client profile already pulls up. The secretary is here. So if I want to add the secretary, I'll just select them from the list. If I created the client in this account, then there will be no email here. So then I would just have to start typing it in. Once I type it in and save the invoice, it will be added to the client profile. And remember that button invoice attachment. So I kind of lied. That button actually turns on this option here. So without this button, this option doesn't show. And then I also have to turn on this button for the PDF. So it's kind of like a two-step process, a little odd, I know, but this turns on this option, selecting the button turns on the PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and send the invoice and we'll see what happens. Perfect. And I'll get kicked back to the page. That was the last invoice I touched. It's sitting here. Um, I'm going to do another quick invoice because I want to show you what a recurring invoice is like, and then we'll come back and explain this page. So I'm going to click new invoice on the top right hand side. I'm going to add Conrad again. I'm going to sell, I'm going to put in what I'm selling him. So let's just say I sell watches every month. Perfect. That looks good. Um, so I'm going to, so let's just say I want this to be an invoice that comes out on the first of every single month. Um, he's more, I'm a watch subscription business. He just buys watches every month. He has a lot of watches. Um, so if I were to stop here and create this invoice, this is a one-time invoice. If I want to turn this into kind of like a rubber stamp that creates invoices on a regular basis, I can click make recurring here. And then now, as soon as I click this button, this is no longer an invoice. It's that rubber stamp I was talking about. And then I have some rules of when the invoices should be sent out based off of this. So like I said, I want the invoices to go out on the first of every month. So I'm going to get make the next invoice come out on the first. I can make the invoice come out today and do it on the 27th of every month. It's up to you. How often do I want it to be sent out? So I can do anything as long as there's a pattern. I'm going to leave it up monthly. How many invoices do I want to go out? So I can do infinite, which just basically means that it's going to continuously send invoices on the first of the month until I decide to stop it. If it's something that's more like a contract, like uh, Conrad promised to buy exactly 12 watches from me, I can change this. And then as soon as the 12 months are done, it'll turn itself automatically. I'm going to make it one though, just because I don't want it to constantly create invoices in my email. You got send invoices automatically. Basically, this is a one and done. On the first of the month, an invoice will get created, sent to the client, and then you can decide how to take payment. Create a draft invoice basically means that the invoice gets created but not sent to the client. It turns into what we call a draft status, which we'll go over in just a second. Uh, you go into the invoice, double check everything, and then you manually send it to the, to the client. Most people end up using send invoices automatically. So I'll go ahead and click done. This looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. That's the client's email that's being pulled. Again, if I need to add any other people, I'll either have to choose from the list or write them in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And basically what's gonna happen is on February 1st, an invoice is going to get created in this section and hopefully Conrad play pays it. Another cool thing with recurring templates and credit cards is if I have the credit card option turned on, when Conrad gets that first invoice, they can go ahead and put their credit card information in and they can decide to save that. 
Um, if they decide to save the credit card information, the next time an invoice goes out on March 1st, then the card's going to get charged automatically. They don't need to uh, put in the credit card information again. The client has complete control over that. There is a button that says save credit card for future use. So if they don't want to do it, make sure that it's off. If they do want to do it, make sure that it's on. If I ever need to edit one of those recurring templates with the rubber stamps, uh, keep in mind that they are different from invoices. Invoices are sent to the client. Recurring templates are the rubber stamps. I'm going to click recurring templates over here. I see Conrad's recurring template. I'm going to click on that, and then I can click edit, and I can get back to the screen to make some changes. Let's go back to the invoice side of things though. So as I mentioned, uh, that recurring template didn't create an invoice. So it was just essentially showing you how to create a recurring template as the invoice doesn't come out until the first. But here I can see invoices that were already created. And one thing you're gonna notice is a whole bunch of statuses. So we kind of help you keep track of your invoices and these statuses change depending on events. If I went into the invoice and I just click save, I didn't send it to the client. So that's that draft status. It will be a great draft here. It basically means that you haven't sent it to the client yet, most likely because you're still working on it. Then you got sent, which means that you sent the email to the client or the recurring template created an invoice and sent it to the client. That will change to viewed if the client opens up the link in the email. So again, it's still not due yet. You've sent it out and the client viewed it, you'll see viewed. If the due date happens, then overdue is going to show up, which means that it's past the due date, due three days ago for this example. And then if the client makes a payment by credit card or ACH, it's going to change to a paid status, which means that everything is good. You'll also notice that if it was an invoice that was created from a recurring template, it's going to say recurring here. I can click on that. That's going to bring me to that specific recurring template. I can take a look at it or make changes if I want to. If it doesn't say anything underneath it, then it's an invoice that I created one at a time. The description is essentially usually the description of the first line item uh, on the invoice itself. I also have advanced search options down here, so I can search all the invoices for a specific client. I can look at outstanding. So this is gonna show me all the invoices that have not been paid yet, filtering out the paid ones. Um, so this is a good indicator to see how much is owed to me. This actually is a lot of these up here. Uh, so total outstanding, that number equals all of these invoices. Perfect. So I've been talking a lot about accepting credit card payments, but what if you don't want to do the uh, credit card payments or ACH because you don't want to pay that extra fee? So you're just taking payments outside of FreshBooks. That's okay. Uh, what you would need to do is because we're not going to know when an invoice is paid is you'll want to go into this invoice section, find the invoice. We're going to click on it. You're going to click more actions on the top, and then you're going to click add payment, and you're just going to fill in the info here. So how did they pay you? It was a bank transfer. Um, I can send a notification to the client to let them know that a payment was made on my end. And as soon as this is done, this, uh, this invoice will go into a paid status. The client will get a notification because I turned on that button, and I can see the payment down here. If you ever do a mistake to the payment, you can come down here and edit it. Perfect. So we talked a lot about entering information into FreshBooks, like creating clients for like a mini CRM, which can be accessed from here. We created expenses, which is half of the information that you want to report to the government at the end of the year. We also created some invoices. Um, the next thing we want to take a look at are the reports. So uh, if you look on the left hand side over here, you can click on reports, and this is essentially going to show you the reports of all the information we've entered. The main reports that I generally suggest that everyone has is your invoice details report. So that's how much money you've earned from invoices. Your expense report, that's how much money you've spent. Your profit and loss, which is your invoice details versus expense report, but does not include any taxes. And then your sales tax summary. So essentially your sales tax plus your profit and loss equals your expense report and your invoice details. So we, how I got the invoices up here is I just click the little star on the left-hand side. That just brings it into my favorites. It's not really important. Just a little way we can organize, I can organize things a little bit more. If you want to take a look at the report, just click on the report over here and you're going to see it's most likely going to default to this year uh, with the information, but I can change that. 
Um, so for the invoice details report, if I want to make it last year, I can just by clicking last year. Uh, there is an option for custom as well. So if you want to do a report that's not specific to any of these, just choose custom and pick the dates yourself. And then I have an option of issue date and pay date. Basically what this means is when an invoice is paid versus when it comes out can affect the report. So for example, let's just say I had an invoice that was created on December 30th of last year, but the owner didn't pay it until January 30th. If my report says this year and I do issue date, that report's not gonna be, or that invoice is not gonna be on this report because the invoice was actually sent out last year. But if I do pay date, that invoice will be on this report because the payment was done this year. A lot of times I find people use pay date, but just know that both options are there. I can sort this report by client. So if I chose Conrad, it'll show me all the invoices he's paid. I can sort this report by invoice stat or by invoice status. I have to get rid of Conrad first. There we go. And I have to do issue date because pay date means it's obviously paid. Uh, so I can see all the outstanding invoices. So this is similar to the way that I filtered on the invoice page. And then if you are doing a multi-currency business, we don't do exchange rates on our end. So we'll just give you a separate report for each currency. So this is my Canadian report. And then I can look at my US report if I wanted to. I don't have any US invoices this year. With these reports, if I wanted to, I can go to more actions and I can export this to an Excel. I can print it. I can also print to a PDF or I can send it directly to who I need to send it to, who will get an Excel file of it or CSV to be more specific. Um, so let's just say I wanted to send it to my accountant. I would just type in their email address here and this will send it to them. The expense report is going to be pretty similar. Uh, so again, it's pulling in my expenses from this year as a default. I can click on filters and change that. I can sort by category. So remember how we wanted to see things that were like part of the contractor. Uh, this year, I don't have very many expenses. So let's do last year. Let that load. I have probably a lot of expenses from last year. So I think that's why it's taking a little bit longer. And it also likes to do this during demos. Cool. So I think the demo is making my, oh, there we go. And I probably clicked that button to get out of there. I clicked the button right as it loaded. Uh, but essentially what it's showing me is uh, it's going to show me the categories of the expenses. Um, so I can just go ahead and uh, choose the best one uh, that I'd like to do. Uh, let's see if I can get my profit and loss report. And my apologies, just a little bit of technical difficulties. There we go, I'm back in my account. I'm gonna go ahead and click on reports. Uh, so let's take a look at the profit and loss report. So the profit and loss report is pretty similar. Um, it's gonna show me all my sales up here. It's gonna show me my expenses down here and then it'll kind of give me a net profit. Um, so invoices are invoices I've sent out. There is a section called other income, which we go more over in 201, but essentially what other income is, is a way to plug in income that's not related to an invoice. Um, and then you got expenses down here. Again, I got filters, so let's do last year. Hopefully that loads up perfect. And then I have a report here and it sorts it all by month. I can sort it by quarter if I want. Again, I can do that builder collected. And again, I can send these reports or print them if I want to. And then the last popular report is the sales tax summary. So essentially it's just showing you everything that I build. Um, so this column shows me how much was taxed. So I had an item for a dollar that I taxed probably 5% on. And then that is the tax that was actually spent. And again, filters, accrued, things like that. Perfect. So we uh, actually, you know what I'll do is I'll, we have a little bit of time. I'm going to show you that other income section just because it is really interesting. Um, so in FreshBooks, if you have a income that's not coming from an invoice, let's just say you you have a third party software making sales. I can click payments over here. I can click other income over here and I can just enter in my other income by clicking the green plus. Essentially, I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the information. So that's where I got the money from. That's the date. I earned $10. They paid me with a bank transfer in a category. 
I can click here and that's going to show up on my profit and loss report. So that's why there was that extra line. Um, for example, we have an integration with um, we have an integration with Square, where whenever you make a sale on your Square card, that gets created as other income here. So that's where it's going to appear on the profit and loss report. This section is also really cool because if I click on invoice payments, uh, these are all the payments that came in through my system, so I can see which invoice they relate to. If I ever have a credit card payment that I need to refund, this is where I'm going to come. I'll drag my mouse over the section and just to the right of this pencil, you're going to see a circle with an arrow which says refund. If I click it, that's how you're going to refund your clients. Cool, so we have reached the end of our webinar, but I did want to show you some additional tools that we can help support you. Um, on the top left hand side, you'll either see a circle with your initials or a picture or a gear icon, they're the same thing. And if you click on help, this is going to give you our help tools that we have. Uh, we do have a help center. So the help center is good for more like basic questions, like how to set up WePay. You can just type in WePay here. Like how long does it take for my payments to come through? And we're going to give you all the information in regards to that. Um, so that's a cool tool. Again, they're for really simple questions. Um, ask us is by email. So if you send us an email, it gets to us. It's not going to be instant, but we do check our email boxes pretty much 24 seven. Uh, so we'll reply to you there. And then you can always give us a call. This is our phone number. Whenever you do call us, there will be a six digit support key here. This is how we verify your account. Um, so instead of stumbling over email addresses and trying to spell it, um, if you log into your account, you give us this number, you're fully verified and we're able to help you out. So um, on behalf of Conrad and myself, Justin, I did want to thank you for joining today's webinar. I am going to go ahead and stay here for just a little longer. Uh, if you do have any questions, Conrad's going to answer them and then we'll close it up from there. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and stay fresh. Mm -hmm.